Good morning. Before I get started, let me say um, that I hope you're having a good day. I also want to say that as that front of my video shows, I am retired, which means I can make videos all day if I choose. I don't plan to, but I could. So don't ask me why I'm on here. I find it to be a good means of communication. Despite all the insulting comments I may get concerning certain subjects or people. But my intention is, is well-meaning, believe it or not. So I'll go ahead on to what I came on here today for, because I think it's going to be pretty interesting. I've been pursued by people to come on their radio shows, talk shows, internet shows, write things and send it to them concerning my son. And I have refused, except one, I believe, with a gentleman named Solar Mind, who is a, uh, quite a fan of my son. Other than him, I don't believe I have done one, but I have been asked quite a bit. So I've been thinking maybe it's about time I did something on my own and on my time to express some things, hopefully to clear up some things. Since my son put me out there a little while back in a negative light, I felt even more inclined to speak on certain things concerning me and him. But I refrained because I don't see that that's stuff that people need to know. Like, you know, a lot of people are saying I'm putting business out and it's an argument between me and my son. There's no family business being put out on these videos. If there is any, I'll be letting you know that it will be. But there's not going to be because it's none of your business. Now, there are certain things because of his notoriety that people want to know, and they figure, oh, his father would know. Even though it appears, I'm sure, that he's minimizing my involvement in his life as of late. I've noticed that he speaks of his mother quite a bit, but doesn't say anything about me except in a negative light. But that's okay. I know the truth, he knows the truth, and that's what matters. But there are some things that I did want to bring some light to, and they're not, I don't think, areas of disagreement between he and I. It's just for elaboration and, um, I guess, a little information. The main thing is, this is not in any way going to be against my son. I've said this before, but people twist it anyway and cause it to be appearing as though I'm somehow attacking my son. I'm not. I don't have to express anymore how I feel about my son. If you look at the videos, you know. You know, I've been called a whining little bitch because of what I said in reference to the love I had for my son. That's okay. Um, it's just too bad that, you know, our community has devolved in such a level where we can't have discourse without disagreement. You know, as soon as you disagree, it's a problem. And contrary to what I just heard on a video about it not being about the person, but it's about the job or the goal or the message, I find that not to be true. I think there's a lot of idol worshiping going on here, and it's pathetic. It's truly pathetic. As a result, a lot of things are being misconstrued. A lot of facts are being left out. And a lot of people are being hurt and offended for no reason except for the fact that they're being straightforward about things, as myself. But like I said, my son put me out there. I mean, I did uh, speak on a couple videos he did in the past, especially one from way back. And I guess people took that as an assault or an attack on my son and his credibility, which it was not. But I did it. It's done. Now, this one here is primarily because I'm getting tired of being asked questions, not just on the Internet, but just overall. And I refrain only because I just felt like I did. I felt like I wanted to. But there's some things that, you know, 
maybe you need to know that a good, not anything bad, just good things about life and the way I see it. But they're going to be particular things. So I'll make this as quick, as brief as possible. I'll try to speak quickly, but hopefully will you understand me because I don't want to take a lot of your time. But I wouldn't do it if I didn't think it was necessary. I'll just say real quick that um, my background has put me in positions to help people. When I went into the military, it was not <laughs> wholly voluntarily. In fact, I got in trouble and it was one of the options for me to get out of trouble. So I took it. As I went through the military, though, I also experienced a lot, as I said in the past, of racism and racial disparity. But one thing I did is I went to become a drill instructor in the Marine Corps at Paris Island, South Carolina, because I didn't like the way I was treated by some of the white drill instructors back in 1975. And I didn't want to see other black Marines coming through, going through the same kind of treatment. So I went to the drill field. And I was able to help a lot of black Marines, but I caught hell out there too because of the simple fact that I had a difference of opinion on many things. And I paid the price for it, believe me. But my point being, my goal in going though, initially was, of course I had to do my duty to the Marine Corps, but my primary duty was to make sure that the other young black Marines that were coming through were given insight and assistance that would help them to further their careers and not be booted out or discriminated against like a lot of black Marines were when I was coming through. So I went and did my time in the Marine Corps and during that time I had gotten involved with a lot of issues concerning race, but like I said, that was on another video. So I came out and I started working at a place that I used to actually live in, which was a boys town. And I started working there with black youth there. And um, I was able to share my experiences with them about me growing up and me living in that place where they lived, which, like I said, is a black boys town. It was called Black Boys Town back then. And I was able to help them young men. I would like to think that I had an impact that was positive for them. That was after I first got out. And then I continued on. And uh, life took me where it took me at, my jobs employment, uh, now retirement. And since I've been retired, after raising my children, I, my uh, three children, not by Umar's mother, um, I've had time to do what I want to do, which has always been my goal to help black people and people as a whole, but primarily black people with reference to our daily struggles that we go through. And that's what I've kind of dedicated my life to ever since, in addition to traveling. Now, as I, if I brought all that up to say that, contrary to what might be appearing out here, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not whitewashed. You know, sure, I've known a lot of white people still do, and I've been helped by many and still are. But I know our struggles. I live our struggles. You know, um, I've been in the streets of Philly, came through the streets of Philly, dealt with what we had to deal with back in the day. And, you know, it was a learning experience, as it should be. Unfortunately, it seems that now everyone wants to carry their past with them into the future and just cry and whine about it, but don't change it. I don't understand that, but that's how they seem to be nowadays. Um, I took it as an experience that I need to get out of the ghetto and try to do better for myself and my family. And I'm very proud of my family. I'm very proud of my children. I'm proud of Umar, very much proud of Umar. So our relationship is a little strained, as I, which is obvious for him to say what he said. It's obvious that our relationship is strained if it wasn't before. But please don't misunderstand. I love my son dearly, as I do my other children. Um, and I would never, ever do anything that would hurt them. And I would like to think the same that they would feel towards me. When he first proposed to joining UNIA back in the day, I discouraged him from doing that because I had had some dealings with them and it weren't really negative. I just didn't think the philosophy was something that was in line with what I was about at the time. 
Um, I've heard statements about Dr. York, Malachi York. It's really ironic because when he was the leader of the Anshua Law community, I actually, after I got out of the military, I actually was going to join that. <laughs> Me and my family, I was going to join Anshua Law community on 52nd Street here in West Philadelphia. But I went to a meeting after I got out of the military and found out that uh, the things they were about, I wasn't about. And, you know, I read the books, I listened to the lectures, but after I actually got a one-on-one -on -one and started questioning things, I found that that was not what I wanted to do. And it's funny because now it's become defunct, and then I believe Malachi, or Dr. York, um, or Issa, Imam Issa, as he was called back then, moved on to some new kind of uh, theology. And now I believe he's in prison, and I understand that my son speaks about him. I haven't really listened to him say much about him, but... Isn't it something how what goes around comes around? Anyway, our relationship is a little strained at the moment. Uh, I think fathers and sons, mothers and daughters go through this at some period in time. I would like to think that at some point we'll come back together and mutually and respectfully dialogue. But until that time, there's no adversarial relationship here between me and my son. Now, I do have a opposing view of many things he said and definitely I don't necessarily like the manner in which a lot of things are said. Now people say well so separate the the manner in which it's said from the message. Well the message is supposed to be about black people then I'm down with that. But it's supposed to be about black children I'm definitely down with that. But like I said it's offensive to me sometimes what comes out of his mouth not just the words but the the message, and so I speak on it. I can do that. Um, I'm going to do that. As far as Frederick Douglass goes, I don't know why it keeps becoming a question about Frederick Douglass. I've said it before Umar was born. I attended um, reunions, Kelly Basin family reunions. I'm sorry, Kelly, Kaysen Bailey family reunions, because Frederick Douglass's name used to be Bailey. It's on the side of my grandmother, Ida, who has passed, of course, who was the mother of my mother. I'm sorry. My grandmother's name was Vivian. My mother's name is Ida. It is through my grandmother's line that we are related by blood to Frederick Douglass. Okay? By blood, we do not come from the loins of Frederick Douglass. Now, I realize that that is a very minimal relationship, but it still exists, and I guess that's what my son talks about, and that is a fact. I have been and will continue to be in contact with those in the Douglass line who say that we aren't, and I have and will continue to try to talk with them, and hopefully one day, face-to-face -face dialogue with them, with documentation, from not because they are the sole determining factor of who's related, but because I think it's only mutually respectful to do so. And ultimately, I hope that we will both accept the fact that we are, as this and as it may be, related. So reference to his school. I have nothing to do with his school. No, I am not conspiring with him to take people's money as people has, have implied about me. <laughs> you know, it's funny how people can imply that my son and I are conspiring to take money together, and then my son comes out and says something about me having fun about his possible ruin. But like everything else, you know, it's the Internet and it's people. I come from North Philly, born and raised all my life, throughout the whole Philadelphia, but mainly North Philly. You know, back on the block, this is what we do. It's not respectable. It surely is not mature. But this is what we have done growing up. I'm sorry to see this kind of behavior happening, not only worldwide, but by people who are not young. We did this as young people, you know, name calling, insulting, Things like this, you know, the dozens, that kind of stuff. But not, not at this age. I, th I would think we would be more sophisticated. But I'm saying all that to say that 
we all have a past and we need to learn how to let it go and build our future. And that includes our leaders who are quote unquote supposedly leaders. Because if you having people follow you, you need to set the example. And if the example reminds you of when you grew up in the hood or maybe not have grown up there, but maybe adopted some ways of the hood, then that doesn't look like it's going to be a very favorable outcome for you or your people. Just my opinion. As far as my other children go, uh, people say, why they don't come and support their brother? Well, I'm sure that they have their own reasons for that. I'm sure that some of them side with him, some don't. You know, it's not against Umar because we, or those of us who don't agree with him, you know, choose to do so. It's not against him. We don't have to be in line with his message just because he's related to us. And I, as his father, surely don't have to agree with everything he says just because he said it. I went to his hearing to support him as his father. But at the same time, the way I look at this has to be somewhat unbiased because the reality of the fact is the law is the law. And how they treat us is the way they treat us. And if there are some parts of the law I agree with and some I don't, and so be it. And like I said in the video, I thought that they just brought him here or there to embarrass him. But I'm sure that a lot of it had to do with a lot of problems, some of which he named and some of which we don't even know about that are going on behind closed doors. Um, I don't have any desire to be on YouTube to gain fame. I will say that I'm glad that I'm able to use it and attract people that are attracted to him because then I can make you all aware of different causes that I'm involved in and hopefully have you join with us. Because like I said, my goal is to help people, black people too. And, but I'm, a, I'm more boots on the ground than just sitting back talking about it. And I would like to get more people involved, boots on the ground. Because you can do both. You don't have to just sit back and get woke and conscious by talking and um, sharing this information that you all have amongst one another, there's still reality going on in the streets. And we need you out in the streets. And I hope you will come out in the streets and help us, whether it's cold or whether it's hot, whether it's summer or whether it's winter. Because things are being done to us as a people, and they haven't stopped just because of the weather. And so as you continue to be conscious, as you call it, it doesn't stop you from still being conscious and active. So, yes, I am using YouTube and I am using his name. And I can because, like I said, he introduced me, even though I did say something before, he made me a viable option to listen to by saying my dad, my father, even though it was in a negative way. My causes are very important to me. They affect us. I'm dedicated to them ever since I retired, and I will probably be doing it until I die. But again, as you see, if you look at my videos, you're more than welcome to join, help, support all the causes that I'm involved in and the people that are helping me. My son calling me out was one of the most disgraceful moments for me. It has opened me up to a lot of verbal assaults, threats, innuendos, um, just to totally different things that I wouldn't have expected at this age coming from people, considering the time I've done, the things I've done, and the people I've known. But see, I don't control this any more than he does. The people who are attacking him, I'm sure they have their reasons, valid or not. But I would also think that he would have been prepared for this based on the platform that he's using. I'm sure that he's strong enough ultimately, as long as he's true to his cause, to overcome these obstacles. But one thing I must say is that the leadership that he exemplifies, that I've seen, is not very impressive. The information is, but not necessarily the leadership. And I hope that 
he can learn from these experiences, especially as it comes to attacking people. I really think that that is very, very bad, and it has become a detriment to his cause. Um, the other issues that may have been brought out in reference to me and my family and my son, like I said, I don't believe it's any of your business. The things I've spoken about, I don't believe that I've said anything that is personal in reference to me and my family. I am the father. I have been involved in my son's life. I have made decisions that have directed my son's path in life. When I made them, people weren't in agreement with me all the time. He wasn't in agreement with me. But the end product is what it is, good, bad, or indifferent. And I don't take away anything that benefits him and I can only apologize for anything that may have been to his detriment. The bottom line is we need to be our own leaders. If he can do it, you can do it too. Maybe not have the information unless you have the time to gain that information. But like just like the brother Clark, who is very well versed, knows our history in and out, for he passed, he did not go to college. In fact, he became blind, but he still had a wealth of knowledge and information. So if you truly want to, you can just delve yourself into anything, any subject you want, and become very proficient, and then expound that information to other people. My, my, the point I'm trying to make is, you cannot continue to act like one man can lead a movement. People lead a movement. The man is only the figurehead. It is up to us to lead the movement. Now, when we put a man out in front of us, that we are saying that he represents us. And when you do that, you better make sure that that's who you want representing you. And when our leaders fault. When they make a mistake, it is up to us to correct them. Not fall in line, not make excuses. It is up to us to pull their coat. And if they don't let us pull their coat, then guess what? They're not our leader anymore. They're our dictators. And they're telling us, I'm right, right or wrong, and you will follow me the way I say or else you will be booted out, ridiculed, ostracized. That is not community, folks. That is dictatorship. So, I realize that this is going to be quite a bit of information. I don't know how it's going to be spun, but I know it will be. And I know it will be a negative. But I can't control that. Like I said... My son is doing great work. I realize how many people he's touched. I see the things he does. But that does not negate anybody, including me, from being able to critique or criticize in a loving way what he does. And if you feel that the only thing you can do is say positive things about him, even if you don't really feel that way, that you're not helping him out. He's still young. He's still growing. And he can only be the best that he can be based on who and how you treat him. There's an old saying in Marine Corps, if I may say. I know a lot of you don't care much for the military, and I'm not saying I still love it. But I learned quite a bit about manhood and leadership from the Marine Corps. We used to say there's no such things as a bad Marine, only bad leadership. So there's no such thing as a bad follower, only bad leaders. So anything you're doing reflects upon him and whatever he's doing reflects upon you. And you should both be complimenting one another. Thank you.